have uh, government uh, wanting to uh, address climate change in part by uh, pushing more electric vehicle sales and automakers at the same time investing billions of dollars into EVs to meet those targets and they need to sell them. Uh, so you have this push and pull going on at the same time uh, to get more EVs into the marketplace. That's John Irwin, an automotive news reporter that covers suppliers and electric vehicles, talking about how U.S. mining needs a major boost to meet surging EV demand. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Laura Harris. Welcome to Auto News Now. We'll hear more from John soon on how the U.S. and other nations hope to achieve their targets on EV adoption and the latest headlines for you. But first, our lead story. Hyundai is getting sued over allocation practice. A Hyundai dealer based in New York is suing the automaker for withholding inventory. Retailers are more sensitive to irregularities in new vehicle allocations. Because of supply constraints across the industry, microchip shortages, and other challenges, the dealer who's in one of Hyundai Motor America's largest regions, alleges inventory is being withheld because the store has not opted into the Korean automaker's facility image program. The dealer says the new vehicles are being withheld as retaliation for not moving forward with renovations. Honda's EVs will get a leg up on pricing, and GM is the automaker to thank. American Honda's two upcoming EVs will rely on GM's North American factories, and its EV architecture and Altium batteries. The two electric vehicles on the horizon? The Honda Prologue and the Acura ZDX. Both are co-developed with General Motors. The partnership allows Honda to leverage the investments GM has been making in its Altium drive system and its upcoming wave of EVs, as it readies itself for its own zero emission future. You can read more on these stories in our newsletter, The Daily. To subscribe, go to the More section on our website and click Newsletters on the left side of the screen. The EV race continues as the U.S. and other nations hope to achieve their targets of electric vehicle adoption. But before that can happen, supply chains for critical materials will need to be built up to a significant degree and fast to meet carbon emissions goals set around the world. Everyone's pointed in the right, the same direction, maybe for the first time, and there's a lot of money being poured into it at the same time. Uh, and, you know, that's important. I mean, you know, there are a lot of hurdles ahead, but everyone's sort of moving in the same direction, even if uh, uh, there are some uh, hurdles to clear in the uh, coming years. The auto industry needs about 50 more lithium mines, 60 more nickel mines, and 17 more cobalt mines. And this is just to meet EV demand projections for 2030 as automakers look to sell more battery electric vehicles, and as governments move to reduce the number of ICE vehicles sold. And some automakers are looking to take the situation into their own hands. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw automakers partnering, uh, you know, working together to secure supply where it might make sense for them. Uh, I think partnerships are uh, uh, the future uh, when it comes to securing supply, uh, at least until you know, we get more of these mines and refineries up and running. But supplies aren't the only obstacle. There's a heavy reliance on China for critical materials. Industry experts say this leaves the North American industry open to geopolitical risk, as tensions rise between the American and Chinese governments. Also, there are permitting problems, as getting a mine operational in the U.S. can take upwards of 10 years. And there's uncertainty about which battery chemistries will win in the long run. Automakers and battery companies are looking for those different battery chemistries. That might mean longer battery range at a reasonable cost. But even with all these hurdles... We're going to get there just because everyone's pointed in the right direction. Um, you know, everyone wants to localize and regionalize their supply chains for a variety of reasons. So uh, eventually, where there's a will, there's a way. We'll get there eventually. Thank you, John, for joining us. You can read more on his story on autonews.com. That's all we have today for Auto News Now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Autonews TV and online at autonews.com for updates from our reporters all day, every day. I'm Laura Harris. Have a great night, and I'll see you all next time.